You know what one of the all-time worst feelings is? It's coming to the end of a drawing that you've spent at least 15 hours on and realizing that there are some pretty big proportional issues. And that's exactly what happened to this piece. But I fixed it and I'm gonna show you how so that you can save your artwork as well. So I had actually come to the end of my drawing process before I ever realized that there were any proportional issues. And this is super common when you're really close to your work and you don't take a moment to take a step back and look at it as a whole, which was totally what was going on here. But after I took a step back to take photos, I felt like the eye on the left side was a little wonky. So I actually took the photo and I put it into Procreate and I started analyzing it right next to the photo. Here I am measuring the angle of the eyes which was where I was feeling there was the biggest issue and I took a line from the photo brought it over to my drawing to measure it and I realized that the eye needed to get scooted up a little bit and in towards the midline. While I was drawing over my drawing in Procreate, I also checked my parallels and I made sure that my horns were on the same parallel as the eyes as the nose. And then I took a look at the drawing as a whole to decide if there were any other adjustments I wanted to make. And I tried a lighter color over in the bottom left corner of the background and I really liked that. So I decided that I was planning to bring that over to my final drawing as well. If you've been enjoying this video so far, I would love it if you nudge that like button. That encourages YouTube to share this video with more artists, and I would really love as many artists to benefit from this content as possible. Thank you so much for your support. Taking some time to really understand what's going on in your drawing and how you're going to fix it is incredibly important because when you come over into your artwork, it can be kind of confusing because you're actually drawing right over the top of your drawing. And so coming in with a really firm understanding of what you're doing is going to help you stay organized. Here, I have a darker colored pencil and I am beginning to look at those parallel lines, making sure that the eyes are parallel to the horn and I am using that darker pencil to actually move the eye in and up. I'm going back and forth between drawing the eye and drawing the background and the anatomy around the eye so that all of it moves over together. This kind of an approach really wouldn't work on a traditional white cotton paper, but because the pastel mat is so toothy and holds so many layers, I'm actually able to draw right over the top of my previous drawing, and with a little bit more pressure, I'm able to erase everything that was behind. And when I say erase, I don't mean coming in with an eraser and physically removing it. I actually am talking about covering it up completely. This approach is a lot more similar to how you would fix mistakes in an oil or an acrylic painting, just covering up the mistakes with a new layer as you adjust and refine. To get these lines to stick over the top of the previous layers, you're going to need to use a little bit more pressure than you did probably in previous layers. Think very heavy handwriting pressure, pressure that would indent the paper. And when you're moving those areas that are lighter in value, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to grab your lighter colored pencil and come in with quite a bit of pressure. I am following along the new edge of the face, bringing it in with the lighter colored pencil and then following it with the darker colored pencil to really carve that edge out right here. When it comes to adding your brighter colors in, you're going to need to do this in a couple layers because occasionally when you lay a new color down over the top of previous color, it'll mix a little bit into the colors that preceded it. So here I'm trying to lighten up the eye and add some yellow into it. So I actually came in with quite a brighter yellow than I had used before and using brighter reds as well. And with a few layers and lots of pressure, you you will be able to bring that bright, vibrant color back. 
Occasionally, it'll mix a little bit with the background, and that happened right here where I had some dark purple on a previous layer, and I came over the top with a light gray, and the light gray and the dark purple mixed together and gave me this little lavender piece right underneath the eye. And although that wasn't part of my original plan, I just decided to incorporate it and to use it for my final drawing, like it was planned that way from the very beginning, rather than fighting it because I probably wasn't going to be able to come back from that. The order in which you repair and fix your drawing is the same as the order that you use for drawing the fur. And I discuss that order in detail in this video. But as a recap, you wanna make sure the structure is there first, then you wanna work on the direction of the fur and the color. And finally, you're going to add those last little details, which for this particular area are the eyelashes and those little whisker pieces that stick out from above the eye. Those pieces go last because they sit on top and we want to keep them really crisp and clean. I then moved over to the background and began adjusting that color. And I liked the new color, but it felt a little separate from the goat. So I decided to come in with that same color and add a little halo around the edge of the jaw. Obviously, there is no green halo in my photo reference, but this is an artistic decision that helps relate the background to the subject. And these new background colors and final adjustments on the goat's fur stick right on top of the previous layers. And really, I haven't run into a place where I've run out of space to adjust these drawings on pastel mat yet. Here is the final goat drawing next to the original. And I definitely feel that these proportional adjustments were worth the investment. If I had made proportional mistakes on a white smooth cotton paper, I would not have been able to repair it the same way that I did on this pastel mat. And that is one of the things that I love so much about pastel mat. It is so forgiving. If you haven't tried pastel mat yet, you've got to. So drop down in the notes below and click on the links where you can purchase it from Blick or from Amazon. And if you want to learn even more about pastel mat, be sure to check out this playlist where I have dropped all of my instructional videos on using colored pencil or pan pastels on pastel mat. Well, that's all for now. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. Can't wait to see you next week in learning how to draw feathers. All right, bye.